Today, the $37 trillion black hole. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. There is a chart doing the rounds, courtesy of the CEC, that's an Australian political party, who is advocating the introduction of a Glass-Steagall banking separation bill, and which is likely to be tabled late June which shows that the total value of financial derivatives in Australia is around $37 trillion. Now, I've had a number of people ask about this data, which is not attributed. What does it show? And is it right? Well, the short answer is easy. Derivatives are used quite extensively by many sectors of the Australian economy. The data actually comes from the RBA series B2, Banks Off Balance Sheet Business. This lists out banks off balance sheet balances by category. The major components relate to interest rate derivatives, mainly over-the-counter or OTC products, meaning they are not exchange-based transactions, but are bespoke hedges, either for the bank's customers or trading on their own behalf, with other banks, or both. Thus, they may be speculative in nature, as traders are taking positions in the market. Over the years, the Treasury operations of banks have become a profit centre in their own right. The RBA data shows the range of products, but the largest by far relate to interest rate swaps, which converts a fixed interest rate into a floating interest rate, or vice versa. This offers protection against rate fluctuations and the opportunity for speculative position taking. A large part of the turnover in both foreign exchange and interest rate derivatives markets is into bank activity, with these institutions hedging positions built up through market making activity or for proprietary purposes. According to data from the Bank for International Settlements, the BIS, around 70% of the total turnover reported by Australian-located counterparties is undertaken with another bank, either domestically or offshore. And looking in more detail across the various instruments, there are more than $22.7 trillion worth of swaps out there, plus other interest rate vehicles as well as from a smaller volume of foreign exchange contracts. These are the principal amounts of the instruments. And by the way, the options contracts can be more risky depending on whether you hold a put or a call option, but that, as they say, is another story. The bulk of the transactions are interest rate related, but it is worth noting, as the RBA did in 2011, that Because redundant over-the-counter derivative positions are not generally closed out, unlike exchange-traded derivatives, turnover volumes result in a significant build-up of gross outstanding positions for dealers. This notional amount is a much larger figure than the estimated market value of these positions. The bulk of this build-up is due to interest rate derivatives, reflecting both the longer maturity of many interest rate derivative contracts and the heavy utilisation of these as hedging instruments by banks and their counterparties. Foreign exchange derivatives comprise a smaller, though still significant, share, and the relatively slower build-up in these positions over time largely reflect the much shorter durations of many foreign exchange instruments. In general, these may last only a few days or weeks, compared with many months and years for interest rate derivatives. The interdependencies of counterparties and operational complexities resulting from the build-up of these positions are prime reasons why some central clearing of these positions is desirable. Now, the main dealers in Australia include ANZ, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, 
Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi, Barclays Capital, BNP Paribas, Citi, CBA, Deutsche Bank, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, JP Morgan, Macquarie Group, National Australia Bank, Royal Bank of Canada, UBS and Westpac. Just to confuse the picture a bit more, data from DTCC, Data Repository in Singapore, says OTC derivatives notional outstanding in Australia totaled $42.3 trillion as at June 30th, 2017. Interest rate derivatives totaled $34.7 trillion and accounted for 82% of notional outstandings. Foreign exchange derivatives comprised $7.3 trillion, and that's about 70% of notional outstandings. And credit derivatives totaled only $264.1 billion. This is because OTC derivatives are used by parties other than banks, of course. So the number is larger than the RBA Bank series. The Australian Financial Markets Association, AFMA, is another data source. It was formed in 1986 and is, to quote, the leading industry association promoting efficiency, integrity and professionalism in Australia's financial markets, according to their website. They have more than 110 members from Australian and international banks, leading brokers, securities companies and state government treasury corporations to fund managers, energy traders and industry service providers. The latest data from AFMA, which was included in their 2017 report, says that OTC notional outstandings in Australia were $47.2 trillion, again, with interest rate instruments the main element. But whichever way you look at it, the numbers are large. But we cannot stop there. To get to grips with the bigger picture, it's worth looking at the latest data from the BIS, the Bank for International Settlements, the banker's banker. They produce massive volumes of statistics, including a series on derivatives. Their latest data is to December 2017, and they show that globally the nominal value of over-the-counter derivatives has fluctuated in a range between about $430 trillion and $550 trillion globally. The national amounts remained in this range in the second half of 2017, ending the year at $532 trillion. On a comparable basis, Australia would comprise around $32 trillion, or about 6% of the total. Although the RBA notes that data sourced from AFMA and from the BIS are not strictly comparable, in part due to differences in the data collection basis and different categorizations of the Australian operations of foreign banks. Globally, this is down from the 710 US dollar trillion at the end of 2013, which was in turn a 12% increase on the year before. The longer term trend, however, shows the significant growth over the medium term. Relatively, Australian exposures are growing. But just how much is an interesting question. Then we need to ask whether the notional amounts outstanding are a meaningful number, because these turnover figures measure the notional principle of contracts. Because of the derivatives nature of these transactions, the full principle generally is not exchanged at the time the transactions are initiated, nor might it ever be exchanged over the life of the contract. This is unlike transactions in securities, such as equities or bonds, where the full amount of consideration is exchanged at the time the transaction is settled. So there is another way to look at the exposure. That is through the lens of bought and sold positions. The BIS says the sum of the absolute values of all outstanding derivative contracts with either positive or negative replacement values evaluated at market prices prevailing on the reporting date gives us the gross market value. Globally, the gross market value of outstanding OTC derivative contracts fell to $11 trillion net at the end of 2017, its lowest level 
since 2007. The share of centrally cleared credit default swaps rose to 55% at the end of 2017 as central clearing made further inroads. So you might net off the exposures, positive and negative, to get a baseline netted position. And in a balanced position, the exposures might be quite small. But changes in relative values may create much larger exposures without much notice. Thus, in a volatile market, these exposures could be larger than anticipated, which creates the risks in the system. The RBA said in 2010 that the estimated market value of cross-sectorial bought or sold positions across all derivative classes, both exchange traders and OTC, was around $350 billion, as opposed to the $15 trillion notional exposure. The largest component of this was positions bought and sold between domestic financial institutions and offshore counterparties, largely financial institutions. However, the public sector and the non-financial corporate sector are also significant users, each with around 30 billion of bought and sold outstanding positions as at December 2010. So the exposures can range from trillions of dollars to a few billions. It all depends on what you mean by exposures in the first place. Banks have an obligation to assess their off-balance sheet exposures and use APRA-approved formulations to discount the total exposures back to those which may appear on the balance sheet. Does APRA get inside these figures or validate them? We suspect not, leaving it to the accountants who work with the banks. An APRA spokesperson after the GFC said, we are not in the business of running banks, we're in the business of supervising them, adding, that the role of APRO was to set standards that the banks agreed to abide by. But as we've described, the exposures are highly leveraged and volatile, and in a time of crisis, these smaller, deeply discounted exposure values may be insufficient to handle the demands from the derivatives they hold. If so, and in a crisis, a bank may find their exposures escalate, and it might swamp their balance sheet meaning that the other operations, including loans and deposits, may get caught up. This is especially relevant because of the current environment, with interest rates shifting between the USA and Australia, as shown by the latest BBSW chart, where rates have moved up around 30 basis points since February. Things could get very interesting. And this is the point. Banks who play in the derivatives area actually have additional risks in their business, which are not knowable, but potentially large. In a crisis, it risks the rest of the business. There is no ring fence. And this is where Glass-Steagall comes in, because this legislation would separate the trading operations from core banking operations and protect depositors as a result. The current all-mixed-up universal banks are totally exposed. But such a change will also have an immediate impact on both the profitability and capability of banks, which is why they would resist any such move, despite it now being proposed in Italy and already in existence in some form in China. The bottom line is that the $37 trillion is a good representation of the current gross exposures in our banking system, and this dwarfs the bank's current balance sheets and indeed the country's total economy. The risks are literally enormous, and in a system-wide banking crisis, when multiple parties are exposed, a bailout, if required, would likely have profound economic effects. It might be enough to swamp the entire economy. That's how big the potential risks are. And that's why Glass-Steagall is worth pursuing. As always, if you like what you've seen here today, please like the post and add a comment or question. I read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now by hitting the subscribe bell. And if you've already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst at Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.